The sex drive is a biological urge, but the way sexuality is personally experienced depends on social and cultural context. We are taught what normative sexuality is, who to desire, and how to express that desire. While sometimes there's a felt alignment between sexual urges, sexual desires, and expected sexual practices, at other times they may not align neatly, if at all. In some cultures, sexual behavior, particularly that of women, is significantly restricted. The punishment for violating these restrictions can be severe. In other contexts, sex can be weaponized as a tactic of war through rape. Even when women are the victims of wartime sexual violence, they may end up being stigmatized or rejected by their communities. <laughs> Women and targeted gender minorities find creative ways to empower each other and fight back against the ways their sexuality is culturally constructed to render them vulnerable to violence and punishment. संपत एक गुलाबी गैंग की लीडर है जो है जहाँ जाती हैं जिसकी समस्या देखती हैं या सुनती हैं तो हर समस्या को हल करती हैं थोड़ी सी मेरे ऊपर ध्यान दे मैंने कहा ये गलत तो किया अरे मखो सर ये पगली औरत है जैसे कहते हैं हंस के लेंगे आजादी मांग के लेंगे आजादी हम प्यार से लेंगे आजादी Despite the ways sexuality can be controlled and policed, it is also often a pathway to pleasure, satisfaction, even catharsis or liberation. Many cultures find ways to celebrate and support this pleasure, though they may not often publicly discuss it. Hello. Rwanda has become a world leader when it comes to promoting gender equality in politics, education, and for some, even sexual pleasure. I'm a married woman with three children. I'm a sexologist, and I live here in Rwanda. Kunyaza is an ancient and secretive sexual practice originating from this tiny country. It's said to encourage female ejaculation and orgasms, and although it's not openly discussed, it is well known.
kigabo kikagina kikabikura 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 nabi yabikura nabi ngumugora nyine mukangatare kandi umugora aroroshye afite amazi oburanga ko ngese wanyaza mwa gukoremwa niko Ninde mugabo hano uze kubikora umugore we Simba bwiye ngo munye ko mubikora ndisha kubabaza gusa Kabo niyo mutabizi mbafashe Eh Eh Barahari benshi Niko sha wora bizi Sometimes cultures grow around certain sex acts or lifestyles that, while outside the mainstream, are deeply pleasurable and meaningful for those who practice them. These cultures or communities may share specialized knowledge, vocabulary, codes of conduct, and reconfigured meanings of desires or behavior. Sex and gender are experienced, practiced, and performed in private spaces and out in the world. They may even determine how we move through everyday physical space. Some public social and physical spaces, whether designed for sport, religion, or leisure, are intended solely for one gender. This is known as gendered space. Certain spaces may also be designed or adapted for certain kinds of sexual encounters and may invite certain kinds of sexual practices. In Japan and other parts of Asia, homes are often comparatively modest in size, people may live with their parents well into adulthood, and the domestic realm in general is seen as quite private, with even close friends or romantic partners rarely invited in. So young adults seeking intimacy may choose to rent a room in a love hotel. The rooms of many boutique love hotels don't just provide privacy, but architectural and design elements intended to enhance a romantic encounter or enable a fantasy, from the classic rotating bed and mirrors to more elaborate scenes and settings. Rather than creating a totally private space for couples seeking intimacy, the British practice of dogging plays with the very idea of public and private. Dating back to at least 1853, dogging means having sex in a semi-public place with the intention of being spied on. In the past, there were known dogging spots. Today, people may send out alerts via text or in social media forums about where they will be, often in a car parked somewhere on the outskirts of a city. In addition to disrupting different norms of privacy, the dogging space may also disrupt everyday sexual identities, as those involved in dogging as voyeurs or participants may be aroused by or invited into homosexual encounters, even if they identify as straight. Our gendered heritage impacts numerous facets of our lives. The ways we experience intimacy, the jobs we can do, the activities we enjoy, the level of autonomy we have over our body, and more are all influenced by the cultural constructions of sex and gender. Reflect on the ways you have learned about sex and gender throughout your life. What influences do you think had the biggest impact? What, if anything, is natural about the way you experience gender and sexuality? Thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you'd like to learn more about anthropology's take on sex and gender, check out the resources below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and get your regular dose of anthrodorphins.